Once again, it's on you guys. Welcome to Illustrate Radio. I am your host, T. Gray. Y'all just was brought in on a dope mix from my DJ, DJ Stiletto, my sexy co-host in the building, new hair. Come on, Lucky. What's up, girl? Hey, what's going on? Happy Women Crush Wednesday, everybody. How y'all doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I got all this chocolate in here to crush on. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Yes. So you guys, you already know we got to take care of the house business first. So you all make sure that you are following us at Illustrate underscore radio. Make sure that you're checking us out on YouTube. Make sure that you are always dialed into us right here live every Wednesday, 9 to 10 p.m. And if you can't catch us, then you can always get on your Roku, download that seven on demand. Watch us every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And when you're in your car, you guys. Listen to us on iHeartRadio. Hit us up on Spotify. Follow us on Google. Wherever we we everywhere. So you have no reason not to get all of this. You have no reason not to get all of this. So we're gonna go ahead and jump right into it. Today's love and is love and come on, black people. Is <laughs> love and come on, black people. So I really feel like, one, there's more than enough money to go around. Let me start there. There's more than enough money go, to go around for all of us melanated people to have our own businesses, to thrive, to flourish, to pour into each other, to uplift, to motivate, whatever. Yet and still, no matter how much access we have, no matter how many dollars we gain, no matter how much spending power, buying power, whatever the case may be, we still find time to tear each other down. And I'm just mm -hmm. saying today, come on, Black people. Come on, man. Like, is it is it not enough that every other race tears us down? Is it not enough that um, our men are being taken from the homes, that our women are being degraded, no matter how they're the smartest beings on earth, and that our children are um, having to deal with all these other circumstances and these microaggression, racial things? Like, come on, y'all. It's more than enough hate for L and M to share that. It's more than enough. They got that. They got the hate on lock. We should not be in a position to continuously tear each other down. And it's it's one of those things that it doesn't, it, it starts out small, then it grows. And you would think, oh, well, when people get a certain amount of money, they get a certain amount of class, they don't do that anymore. No, for some reason, it seems like it gets worse. The more um, affluent you get, the more you want to turn your nose down at people who were you at one point. And I'm just going to go ahead and say, your passion is tired. It's tired and it's old. And I'm really, really, I'm really, really over it. I want everyone melanated tomorrow to go to five different people and say something positive. I'm going to do it. I'm going to accept the challenge myself. Go to five different people. They could be strangers. They could be people in your house, whatever the case may be. Say something positive. Let's stop trying to tear each other down so much. Just mm -hmm. come on, let's get through it. Like that. How y'all doing? I know that's right, though, T. Come because I'm gonna accept the challenge with you, so I'm gonna make sure I do it. Tell my five people, I'm gonna do it on a post. Too. You accept the challenge, so we're gonna make sure we do it for the week is out. Well, now we get to my just my luck. <laughs> okay, so get this. New York City Health Departments wants you to get kinky if you're going to be doing a, a, as a part of the sex orgy guide. So in the New York Post, 
um, someone sent me this text message about this this story, how they're pretty much trying to make sure everyone stays safe. If you're going to do an orgy, they are suggesting not to do any face-to-face -face positions. So they appear to be talking about that not so glory hole like everyone is trying to say that they're talking about. That is not a glory hole. That is not a glory. It's not so glory. Okay, it hurts. But... <laughs> um, <laughs> But anyway, anyway, um, they're pretty much saying either get hit from the back, either get hit from the back to, to keep that minimal contact. And if you are going to do it, if you have not been vaccinated, they're really pressing these vaccinations, guys. If you have not been vaccinated, they are suggesting that you quarantine to... Um, not quarantine. If you have been vaccinated, make sure you quarantine for that amount of time. If not, they're suggesting wearing masks and try to keep face-to-face -face contact to a minimal. And if you're going to have multiple sex partners, they are saying, make sure you look the other way or there's enough barriers between you. I don't know how that's going to work. I didn't even know New York had this kind of sex circuit, orgy circuit, but apparently they do because it's being addressed in the NY post. And if you don't believe me, go and check out the story on my timeline because I definitely reposted it on Magical AF Podcast um, Instagram page. So yeah, y'all check it out. That's it for just that's it for just my look. I came across that story. I was like, hold on, wait, what? Because the headline threw me off. I was like, this cannot be real. Get kinky with our graphic COVID sex orgy guide. Huh? From the health department? Yeah, I just say okay. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and say this over here with a public service announcement that somebody in New York took that idea from T. Gray. And I'm going to tell y'all how. So during the <laughs> pandemic, you guys know, like I had to stop doing my shows. So I started doing my show from home and I did two special segments called Corona Chronicles. Got a whole bunch of New York comedians on there. But what I kept saying was that now that there's this pandemic and COVID is here, there's going to be a whole new lane for people wearing masks in the bedroom. Like I started that New York stole it. <laughs> <laughs> they stole it. Okay. But they, they said mask. They said mask or ass. That, that's what they said. They said mask yes. is either going to be a mask or you hit it in the ass. I ain't here. I don't know. About because if you on your knees, that's not really six feet. So, you know, mm -hmm. it ain't. They it's said they don't feet, do the knees. Then if you do, it can be six feet if the dude is tall enough. It's, you can do six feet. <laughs> But if, but if I'm doing a 69 and I'm only 5'5", five five, I'm coming up show. <laughs> <laughs> that was, what? No, this totally went left. We weren't expecting to be talking about this. Oh, gosh. Can't we still, yeah, we, we figure out where to make you know, it work. You know, you know, the the extra signal comes from, because if he like 5'11", he give you a couple of inches, if you think about it. Steady, steady. If he's six foot, he give you, he give you, he give you a couple extra. You know what I'm saying? Y'all get the shit. It's an average. It ends up being an average length. <laughs> I needed this well, talking about. I know, right? Talking about coronavirus and these vaccine, um, and these vaccinations, right? Go ahead and get into that story because, yeah, I'm definitely. <laughs> So we're jumping right into the spit that is. Yeah, my bad. No. I had to pull it back up. She said we're going <laughs> to jump right into the COVID. So what I see here is a bunch of malarkey, you guys. Rhodes College will reportedly charge students $1,500 per semester if they haven't been vaccinated. Let me just woo on this real quick. That, I have all, such strong opinion about the vaccine. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Lucky. Yeah, yeah, me too, because I'm like, this is breaking so many HIPAA violations on so many levels. So they're pretty much saying that if you have been, if you have not been vaccinated, you must walk around the campus in a mask, et cetera. Those who have waivers, um, they'll be waived. Like if you have a health or religious reasons as to why you don't want to get vaccinated, you would need to have a waiver. But and um, from what I'm hearing, 
that waiver is very hard to come by, by the way. Anyway, so you get you, you, you get the waiver. Okay, cool. And I guess those who are enrolled, you can also get um, a waiver too. You just have to say that you will be vaccinated eventually. I don't believe in this shit. This is some bullshit because this is breaking so many HIPAA violations. You cannot ask a person about what they've done medically. That's against the law. So, and then the fact that it, the schools that are rolling it out are HBCUs like Clark and at Clark Atlanta University. Uh, no, I am. I why is why is it that we are always the first to roll some shit out that is not even for us? Thing, this vaccination so, is killing us. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm going to go right. I do have some very strong opinions about the vaccine. I do. But here is where they're not 100% wrong. Now, when we send our kids to school, you guys, and that could be high school, middle school, college, elementary, whatever the case may be, there's always a physical form that has to be done. There's always shop records that have to be completed. Our kids have had MMRs. They've had TDAP. They've had, um, I don't know, D IPV. D D D D yeah, HPV, yep. Yeah. So, They've had varicella. They've had so many things. So the school isn't necessarily wrong as far as documentation wise, but because of COVID vaccine being so new, because of how harmful it has proven itself to be, because the studies have not been done in children, yet they're trying to push these 12 and ups to now start getting it. I think that it's reckless to have that type of rule in place. I think it's reckless. Um, I know that a lot of people, Muslim, Jewish, what have you, do refuse vaccines and yeah, they do get waivers, but I think it's absolutely reckless and I think it's a hindrance to these kids and allowing them to get their education by putting this rule in place. Um, when COVID first hit, everybody was, oh, well, the kids can't get it. You know, the, the kids are fine. And then all these kids started getting it. So I understand the fear, but I don't feel like mm -hmm. us as a country need to continuously be controlled by that fear. It's like everything has been, did you get the vaccine? Did you not? Did you got this? Did you not? Where, where was all this energy for the flu shot? The flu shot was taking niggas out 40 going north. Where was all this energy then? Like, Five. I don't, I don't, um, it's such, it's such a money, money, money scheme. It's so, so fueled by money. And it just, it's sad that that's what the outcome is. You got states giving it's away not only you, giving away all these gifts, but then you're going to charge kids $1,500 a semester? Come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, it's that's the pressure, crazy. to be honest. It's, it's the pressure. And it's not even just about, it's not just money empowered either. This is very systematically done. And the fact, again, if you look at the, 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 I'm not going to stay on this too long, but if you look at who's pushing it out first with everything, it's always pushed out into a black community first. Everything. We are like the test in the crash dummies and I'm tired of it. Okay. Like why, are, why are HBCs picking this up? But anyway, we're going to move, we're going to be moving right on along because y'all know I could talk about this forever. Because I'm, I'm not with no vaccinations. I'm anti vaccination. You know what I'm saying? So, keep on. <laughs> Don Cheadle, Kerry Washington, they're launching a film school for at risk teens, which I think this is absolutely phenomenal. Um, and they are also going to be joined by other elite actors. Um, George Clooney is going to be getting in on this. Mindy Kaling, even LaGoria are going to be getting in on this. And I think that this is fantastic. So if you all know just how much energy and how much raw talent Don Cheadle, Kerry Washington carry. Um, so for them to recognize that there's not only a space and a place for them to do this um, for children who are at risk, but who love to act or who have that raw talent, um, this is phenomenal. So it will be the Roybal School of Film and Television Production. And it's going to launch next year with about 14 to 15 year old students. So that is about ninth and 10th grade, you guys. Um, and then as it grows, they hope to then, you know, of course, add on kids all the way up through 12th grade. So this is going to be academics, 
for them, but it's also going to be the business side and the industry side and the acting side is going to be all encompassing. So I'm excited for the kids who are going to be able to participate. And when they say at risk, of course, you know, that can embody so many different things. But these are, you know, underprivileged children who wouldn't normally have this opportunity, but definitely have that raw talent and that vision and that dream to, to shine. So I'm excited for it. I think that that's phenomenal. I think that it's something that can definitely grow nationwide. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually think it's a really dope thing. Anything that's going to be for our future is I'm always kudos, always with it, always for it. And we definitely need to make sure that we keep reaching out to those who need to be reached out to. So the fact that they're working with at-risk teams, you know, I'm for it. Well, let's talk about somebody else who's at risk. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, trick daddy. They are coming. The beehive has stung and begun. They have not stopped. They are still going strong on this man. You hear me? This man said Beyonce can. He said Beyonce can't sing, and Beyonce is what Jay Z is to hip hop culture because Jay Z is not the queen, of, king of hip hop either. He, he might have a, a slight point, but not really. What, do you, what are your thoughts? Go ahead and give us the full story because, you know, I'd be skipping over stuff. Listen, I want to hear Stiletto's opinion. <laughs> what do you think about this, Stiletto? Jay-Z is the living king of hip-hop. I don't care. I'm going to stand by that. Living. living. Yeah, living. Mm-hmm. I, I said living. Beyonce yeah. can sing. Not only can she sing, she can hold a note and perform. She's a badass performer, probably one of the best under the Jacksons, but you get what I'm saying. So because I rate her that high, I feel like, you know, everybody is entitled to his opinion. Trick Daddy is, but he knows that the Beehive don't play. They don't play about Yonte. They don't. But I mean, I'm glad that he... So his, glad his, glad his, his, his godmother was a very uh, influential vocal coach. Um, and so okay. she's worked with a lot of celebrities. So I would say maybe his opinion could be a little bit biased because maybe you were there or around as Beyonce was getting trained. But like Stiletto said, um, Beyonce live and when she it's is amazing. passionate about something, she mm-hmm. can move mountains with her voice. And I'm going to be and quite honest. That. I can feel like some of her albums kind of limit her. Like, I feel like we don't even really get to see her full range until she's That's live a cappella really or live. something. Yeah. When she can Most really definitely. sing and she can prove. Yeah. That's any artist. That's where you can really yeah. prove really that you show, are yeah, artist. Artist. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's when you can stay on that stage. Because not only does she give you that, but she gives you that plus the dance moves, plus the one, two. And then you know when she really feels it because she stops dancing and really pours out her heart through her vocals. And that's what makes me respect Beyonce because she can do just that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm not taking that. I was about to say the beehive was definitely coming for his whole restaurant. They said his place got roaches, his food ain't good. This is some shit. Yeah. Um, they definitely went on because you know, Yelp, Yelp and Google is like the the heart of most businesses. It can make or break your business. So the fact that they're literally going on giving one star ratings, I mean. I've never ate at Trick Daddy's restaurant. I don't even. I didn't even know he had a restaurant until this report. So honestly, this might be good for him. Might be getting some good publicity. But I heard that he can burn, though. I heard he can burn. So I mean, I think that to be honest, like we sh- we should be able to voice our opinion without without being attacked and without without, right, without, an, without an entire attack on our business or whatever the case may be. That being said, Trick wasn't like. He wasn't a hundred percent wrong, and I only say that because, like, when he was talking about Jay Z, he was like, you know, it wasn't like nobody had a contest and put a crown on that nigga, which is true. But if you look in regionally for New York, yeah, Jay Z's the man. But do but but is that what he's doing? Is he saying okay, just in New York, or does he mean like across the 
nation because right. I feel like there's a king of the South. I feel like there's a king for the West Coast. You know what I'm saying? But again, at the end of the day, those are my opinions. Trick Daddy's right. entitled to his term smoked out opinion. He is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 and I'm a Trick Daddy fan. You know what I mean? I feel like he really made a major mark for Miami. I'm a fan. Oh, but of you course. Know, I don't think he deserves to lose his business over his opinion. Trick Daddy's always yeah. had some obscure opinions that, you know, it's a lot of people who agree with him. It's going to be, of course, Mega Millions who don't, but it's a lot of people who agree with him. You know, but... Anywho, oh, and I would just like to say that everyone, we are live on Twitch as well, so we can actually stream all of our comments, everything. So if y'all can make sure y'all download that Twitch app, give us some thumbs up, follow us, give us some bits and all of that good stuff. Um, yeah, so we can get really, really tuned in with everyone. We're trying to streamline, so we make sure that we cover everything and we get all y'all comments and y'all can actively be on with us. That is going to be so cool. I'm actually well, watching this right now. The people now are about to get a treat, you guys, because it's time for Stiletto to do her thing. So all these new hey. people who are watching us on Switch, this is the one and only all-girl squad y'all going to get all this melanin magic. You got two dope, beautiful co-hosts. You got our super sexy DJ Stiletto. Each and every Wednesday, we're going to be right here live, 9 to 10 p.m., and y'all going to catch this mix. We're going to be right back, you guys. We're going to have our hot take, and tonight, it's so much to talk about. It's so much to talk about. After a breakup, do you get them gifts back? So I want now, you all to be thinking about that. Think about some of the things that you've gotten. Do you really want to keep it? Do you want to give it back? But after a breakup, what's the rules? We're going to break that down when we get back. DJ Stiletto's going to hit you with that. We'll see y'all in a minute. <laughs> she said, do kids count? I heard that. <laughs> hey, DJ Stiletto. <laughs> yeah. Ladies, where y'all at? <laughs> we in here, rocking up, in here, rocking. Let me that's tell you, I at. had all of this happening in here, all of this, all of this. <laughs> all of that's that. That's all of that. Somebody call I'm your wine, because I'm ready. I think your man. <laughs> So we are back, you guys. This is Illustrate Radio, powered by Bliss FM. I hope that you all enjoyed that mix. That was DJ Stiletto. We about to jump into a hot take. The hot take tonight, you guys. Do you give back the gifts after a breakup? That's a very interesting question, you guys. So for me, I feel like it depends on the gift. And when I say that, I'm just going to go ahead and put my, I ain't never gave back nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> what I, it depends on the gift. It depends on the fact that you give it to me, because then I'm not giving it back. <laughs> um, I'm I have... I've given back a gift because I felt like it was a little too flagrant for the type of relationship that we had because we really didn't really have one. And, you know, and giving someone a car, that's a lot. Like, and then everyone knows it's your vehicle. So I'm good. But, you know, I'll drive it like once or twice, maybe a couple more times. But yeah, no. So, not giving it. And I was really young. I just felt like I was young. Um, we weren't really like together. So it was like, you know, he was really fond of me, that type of thing. Um, and we kind of had like a really close bond, but yeah, no. So he pretty much um, was saying that, yeah, I want to give you this car. Da, da, da. He gave me the keys because of also how his dealings were. He was like um, in the fast life. That was another reason. Cause I'm like, um, I know your car, so I'm sure other people know your car as well. 
driving it to go get something to eat was like people honking me that I don't like that. No. So I'm good. Definitely. Okay. okay. What about you, Stiletto? After the breakup, are you giving back any gifts? No. No. After all the frustration, all the agony and pain that you put me through. No. It's mine. No, and I once you give it, it's and mine. I'll, but I don't even think, like, even if, if, you head, if you go half and half, then it's like, okay, it's mine, is it yours? No, but I'm just saying, so what if, what if it was like, uh, a situation where it wasn't any agony and pain, it was like amicable. You know, you both agreed that. I just felt like with us, it was like, you know, this is a lot of pressure. You're really known. I didn't know he was as known as he was um, because I'm like, oh, well, I don't know you. So you ain't that known, you know, especially in our community. So, um, yeah, no, I would give it back if it's amicable, you know. I'm not giving back shoes, bags, or jewelry. I'm not giving back no, shoes, bags, or jewelry, but, that's a, that's but like a house, though. but like a house, you if the house ring? is in my name, I said jewelry, jewelry is included. Oh, if you propose to good. me, and if you propose to oh. me and I, and I accept it, if it's a family heirloom, I'm giving it back because okay. it's family. That, okay. That's that's family. So you do know yeah. that legally, once somebody proposes, that's actually a verbal contract. So then if you don't follow through with actually getting married, that they do have a there's a statute of limitation, you do have the right to get their engagement ring back. But this mm -hmm. is where I'm at with, with giving stuff back after a breakup. The only way you're gonna get some up out of T Gray is if we gotta go to court and the judge said you can have it back. If you bought me something. <laughs> I'm serious. If you bought me something because you wanted me to have it, because you wanted to see me in it, you wanted me to, have, to, to smell like it, you wanted me to wear it, you whatever, whatever kind of gift it is, I'm going to go ahead and hold on to that because the gifts that I give you, I can't then get back. If I treat you like a king and treat you equally the way that you treat me, I don't want your Not shoes back if I, I don't want your colognes back. I, I can't get back these trips. I can't get back these hotel stays. I can't get back none of that. I'm, 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 what, what am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with it? I'm not going to uh, regurgitate and give you that back either. So, no. I'm going to keep whatever it was that you saw fit for me to have in the time that I mattered, in the time that I was important to you, in the time that you love me, care for me, whatever. You did something out of the kindness of your heart because you wanted me to be whatever okay comfortable whatever word you want to use so we're going to keep that same energy on the way out the door thank you for these things it was nice i appreciate it <laughs> moving forward yeah now what i've done though with stuff that i've kept but it had no value to me anymore i had sold things I have done that. Really? I have some really interesting pieces. Yes, I have. And it yeah, was because I've, had, I've, actually, I've actually benefited from somebody else's breakup because she bought, I guess he bought her like two bags. <laughs> I know, right? Y'all probably like, how you benefit from somebody else's breakup? <laughs> um, so a friend of, uh, at the time, a close friend of mine, I'm trying to do it without like saying too much. At the time, a close friend of mine um, was dating someone that I knew as well that bought her two bags and she gave me one of them. And it was like a really, really nice bag. I'm not going to say which one it is because then people won't know. So, because, <laughs> because, it's because the situation was he bought this same gift. Oops, my bad. He bought the same gift for you know the other girl as well. So mm -hmm. it was like he got, yeah. So I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. That's the that's that situation. So anyway, he bought the gift for the other girl, and she was like, "I don't want it." Per. I can respect that. I can respect it. That's why I say if there's Thank something you. that. Value to me I was like, look. <laughs> I will, I will I sell it in a new year's meeting. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah I was like, yeah. I feel like I feel like people who attach feelings and things to materialistic stuff have the wrong outlook anyway. Um, I think that people who ask for things back are a little bit petty. I think that's petty. I think that's so. Petty. Are we getting into think- the Quavo and Weedy thing or? Say it again. Also, oh, okay, so Quavo, because Quavo did like a diss. Quavo didn't really do like a diss, but he like said something about Sweetie. Is that what you're talking about? So what? So he had given her the Bentley, iced it out and everything, had her little icy on the seat. She was so happy when she got it because I remember the video when she posted it. Oh, I Mind remember. You, I remember. She bought him an old school car first when they first started dating a long time ago. People not, you know, they know the history. So I guess, you know, now he buying her the Bentley. When they break up, he take the Bentley back. And then you go and you write a verse in one of your new songs on the album about how you took it back. But good for Sweetie, though, because she bossed up and she bought herself her own Bentley. And there you have it. But that just goes to show, like, know who you're dating and know their manner because this little shit like that, little shit like that. No, oh, you want to go in the Who's be on that petty I'll stuff after a break? Yeah, because mm-hmm. I see. So I have to let's talk about this. Let's talk about this topic too, because I want to get into it. I feel like dudes have a very bad rap. As far men have a very bad rap as far as their emotions and how they deal with them. We have to understand our natural innate ability is to nurture, right? Nurturers are often deal with a lot of pain and we also give a lot of love. Men do. Uh oh. Uh oh. She's about to drop that knowledge on y'all. She's about to drop that knowledge on y'all. And social media said they not ready for this knowledge to be dropped. They said we want to keep y'all in the blind. <laughs> um, I don't know exactly where she was going with that thought process, but I kind of have a, I kind of have an understanding. Also, especially men, with black men. Oh, oh I'm up. sorry. Oh. <laughs> My bad. I was, I was not, I mean, girl, I'm rapping, rapping. I am rapping, rapping. You hear me? <laughs> you you know, you know, you know, you know, the whole time. <laughs> so so what i was we saying was basically oh you can hear me though you just couldn't see me wow we couldn't no we couldn't hear you at all see you oh wow okay so maybe because i was trying to be trying to do too much and be on live too but anyway so i'm off live i exited out so that's why i came back in okay so what i was saying was is that women we have a natural ability to deal with our emotions because we're constantly facing them every day we're nurturers right so we endure a lot of pain and enduring a lot of pain we know love we know how to deal with heartache we channel our emotions differently some of us because even some of us don't have enough love so we act out just like as men would do uh, men or children a lot of the times because they're told to suppress their emotions. I ain't gonna say they're children, but they're told to eat, suppress their emotions on a regular basis. Don't cry, don't show anything, don't do anything. So what do you do when you're heartbroken? Like we can slash tires, we can burn clothes, we can eat a pint of ice cream, we can let it out with our homegirls, we can cry it out, we can go to the gun range and shoot it out. These are all things that I've done. Minus the slash and tires and all the shit to people's property because you destroy my shit, I'm fucking you up. Or I'm gonna, call, I'm fucking like one of the two, meaning like I'm, you won't pay for my shit anyway. So I don't destroy people's things, but even doing those types of things to execute or to, to channel our emotions, we deal with that. Men do not deal with that. So uh, it may seem petty to most women and yeah, she bossed up and got her own and I'm proud that she was able to do it, but we have to also realize that he's hurt at the end of the day. He fucked it up. He fucked it up, granted, but he's also hurt because he don't know how to deal with his emotions. I don't know how y'all feel about it, but when it comes to men, men are very... They got a, they got it hard, man. I, I'm a, I'm gonna try to sympathize with my ego so bad when a female doesn't she doesn't get weak and she doesn't crumble and she bosses up and it's ten times stronger and it's like damn you know they expect us to get weak and I've been in that position where it broke me all the way down and it's like I would never ever do that again like now you gonna watch this come up no I'm not gonna block you you gonna watch all of this shine your friends gonna tell you about. 
Yeah, but, hey, but in a sense, in a, yeah, in a sense, that. he could take it in. He could take it in a sense of. I mean, I always look at glass half full. Can nobody make me feel no type of way about shit that I don't want to feel? Okay, so at right. the end of the day, right. he could look at it like, damn, I learned a lot. I learned a lot from my lessons. My lessons have always been blessings to me. Even if it's some fucked up shit that's happened, I've lost an apartment, my car has been repossessed, I've lost my job and a relationship all in the span of months. And that didn't do, that helped me be better. So I think, you know, all of the triggers that were factors in that in that period of time. And I'm proud that she was able to do that. But again, yo, like, we gotta, we gotta like try to lighten up and understand that they, some of them don't even know how to love. You know what I'm saying? Some of them been through a lot of shit growing up. They done seen their mothers go through a whole lot of shit with niggas or their mothers take a whole lot of shit from men. They, their respect for stuff starts with the mother and, the, and, and how they're loved as a child. So we have to, when dealing with someone, we have to look at that overall, especially if they was the ugly dude who is now cute all of a sudden because he got a coin and he got endless pussy being thrown at him. We got to look at that. We got to look at overall 360 when dealing with a person and try to have and go back to that nurturing gene. You know, I'm going to stop rambling because, you know, I'll be talking y'all heads off. But <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <coughs> no, not at all. You're not rambling, though. You're making very, very valid points. Um, right. You are correct. A lot of us women more so don't look at the damage that is there for some of these men. Um, but this is the challenge to that is one, we're not responsible for their repairing either. The same way that women can be damaged, men can be damaged, but that repair process has mm -hmm. to start from with. Like, I don't going through that he was doing was low key embarrassing, even if you know what I mean. If it was real, never I don't know, but I feel like this. I think that not sometimes, all the time. Saying, hey, there's a better way to do things. I get it. Then maybe you need to change the people around you because somebody clearly needs to be, hey, there's a better way to do things. Like Billy Sorrells and Coco Sorrells, they just went through. If anybody seen that shit, shit was off the fucking chain. Billy Sorrells just lost one of his jobs. Mm -hmm. Like, sir, somebody needs to be around you to tell you, hey, this is wrong. You need to calm down. You need to simmer down. And if the people around you are constantly on that hype you up in that negative space, in that negative field, in that negative way, in your negative actions, like I think people energy is around me. Like I think people really need in our dance, just in our two. Who's going to start taking accountability? Who's going to say, hey, okay, you know so what, this is my Felt as though it's not our responsibility, but they take accountability. Where I feel as though it's different. I feel as though it is our responsibility to actually um, help repair their hearts because we're also damaged, but we know how to deal with things a lot better than even beating our asses and doing some wild ass other shit because they don't have no sense of direction or they. being especially with our black men just being a black man period black women we have still somewhat of a leg up that we because we have a leg up to make everybody else look better meaning like we literally do they, they pulled us up so that we can keep them down right um their opportunities are not what they used to be this wage gap that we're also um in the middle of as well we still at the bottom of the barrel too, but we we don't bring them up. We step on their necks and say, you know what? It's your fault why everything's going on the way that it's going on. I don't have nothing to do with that. When we do, because we know how to love. We just have to make sure that in the process before healing another person that we to ourselves have dealt with our issues, but it is a woman's responsibility 
to nurture that emotional side of, of a man. It is. Mm -hmm. That's what we're here for. And they're here to provide us with security. So if we could get it and look at it as a 360 picture and view, so that way our people can heal because every other culture, their women are their backbones. Their women are the ones who, who help them with a lot. They do, we're the only ones. We're the only ones that it's either my education or my man. We're the ones who put education first, then our family and then a relationship when really it should be, y'all gonna hate me for this, okay? Kevin Samuels made a very valid point. I'm not gonna go too on. He said that unless your degree is in science, math, or technology, you are not making six figures, which is enough to support your $100,000 debt from college and also to support the, the lifestyle, the Mercedes, the whatever, the vacations, et cetera, et cetera. So some of us need to realize where we are and what our purpose is. We're told to go and get educated. You can, because you don't need a man, right? Or go and get educated in case the one, the man that you do have leaves you, like he said, like an education is the key to us, our happiness and our success. And that's not the case. So we have to start being really honest with ourselves about the type of people that we want to be with, because not everybody can get a six figure guy. And not every woman is making six figures. It, it's seven percent of us are, and that's a known statistic. So, are are we going to continue to keep struggling by ourselves and saying that education is the way to go, or are we going to say we're going to do it as a team? I'm gonna make sure I support your dreams and you support mine. I'm just saying. I want everyone to go watch that interview. By the way. Kevin Samuels, how it, how it's about relationship. It's on YouTube. I'm gonna send the link so y'all can see it, what I'm talking about. Well, all right. But we have okay. time, and I'm gonna uh, I'll uh, push the envelope. I think we should talk about this though. This should be this should be a continuation topic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Most definitely. Like I'm not, I'm not against helping to build a man, but. I've had very real conversations with men who are damaged. Um, and why I say that it's not our responsibility, it kind of also, you made a point that, that kind of solidifies why I feel. If I'm damaged and so mm -hmm. is the man, mm -hmm. then by what you said, I'm not only responsible for repairing me on my own, but then also no, we didn't say that on your own. Yeah, no, I'm so not saying on your own. No, but so yeah, in I'm general, just granted, mm -hmm. I'm not taking nothing away from how strong women are, how smart we are, what what God created us for. None, none of those things. Not taking nothing away from that. But I do believe that there has to be at some point a level of accountability on any person's part who is damaged to then of say, course. you know what, let me work on me. Let me yeah. fix me. If my sole responsibility is to not only fix me, but then fix you too, there's a missing piece there. There's there's yeah. definitely there, there's a there's a missing yeah. piece there. So and I'm, I'm not, and I'm I'm not, not saying, saying my responsibility as as women, but that men do have to be accountable too, damaged or not, you do. Yeah, yeah. I definitely encourage them to go get help as well. And I'm just saying, guide them to that. I'm not saying be the help. It's a difference. Mm -hmm. You can nurture mm -hmm. and not coddle like we mm -hmm. do with our children. You know what I'm saying? So it's just a difference. But yeah, guys, this was an awesome show. I really, really um, appreciated everything that we talked about and we covered if you are, I said, I'm sorry, T Gray, because I, I slipped up my bag. Only certain people can call her that. Only certain people can call her that. Um, I learned a lot actually talking to you all tonight about all the different things that we cover. So I'm going to go ahead and let you close it out because you always do it so beautifully. You know what I'm saying? But y'all can find me on Magical As Fuck Podcast. Yes, I have a new episode out. Y'all make sure y'all go look it up. And don't forget to check out our episode from last week with Mr. LFR himself. It was a super, super dope show. And I'm going to get him to post it on his thing because you got all the followers. We need some of your people's too. Y'all make sure y'all go like and subscribe on YouTube as well. 
Most definitely. So Stiletto, you got anything coming up? You want the people to know? Um, yes. I want everybody to know. Um, tap into my regular page, which is DJ Stiletto 1. Stiletto with a Y, S-T-Y-L-E-T-T-O. Um, also, from my page, you can click the link and follow my business page, which is House of Stiletto. I am selling my shoes, finally. The website is not out. It will be out early July, but um, you can DM me, and I do do uh, shipping and drop-offs and pickups and whatever else. So, yeah. I'm excited. I need to go ahead. You got 11? I mean, I got big feet. I got 11. I, a lot of women... Yeah, I gotta get the, the eleven going. Yeah, mm. hit me. I know like that. That's crazy. Like we both short with big feet. I wear a ten, and people always be surprised. I'm like, it is what it is. And I can't never no, find no shoes. Them. All the big feet girls go to the store before I do. I swear to God, I hate that. That's but what's selling out. That's my big sizes. Yes, you guys yeah. make sure that. Um, you also follow me at the T Gray or at the Love Below underscore Sex Talk with T Gray. We'll be right back here, you guys, next week. Illustrate Radio, nine to ten p.m. Streaming live on Facebook, streaming live on YouTube, streaming live on Twitch. We all over the place. Make sure that you download us, you guys. You want to get your Roku? You want to get that seven on demand and look for Illustrate TV channel. And we're on iHeartRadio. We on Spotify. We on Google. We on Apple Podcasts. We we all over the place. So I don't want you to miss it. We, we will be right back here next Wednesday, 9 to 10 p.m. In the meantime, in between time. Bye-bye.